everybody, it's Tara from Crazy Paint Studio, and I will be here once a week to instruct a step-by-step -step painting class, whether you are a beginner or a seasoned artist. If you like to paint, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel, and this way you will be notified each time a new class is posted. I just have to let you know that I had to hit stop and record like 422 times to get that out. It's a lot harder than you think. Speaking is not a strong point for me, so thank you in advance for your patience. Okay, anyway, this is what we will be painting this class. Be prepared to have a couple giggles, a good time, because this is relaxed, no judgment zone. So we will have um, a lot of fun. You can comment if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer everyone. So this is one of the favorites here at Crazy Pea. That's why I decided to start with this. Our palette is yellow, white, burnt umber, raw sienna, oh that's raw sienna, and burnt sienna. We have a cool red and a black. I normally don't go larger than like a nickel to quarter size dollop of paint on the palette. You can always add more, uh, but you can't always take away. So just add a little bit, and as we need it, we can add more. First, cheers. This is uh, red wine. You can have whatever you'd like. You can have water, juice, wine, doesn't matter, as long as you're having a good time. So we start off with our three brushes. We have our background brush, which is usually, and for larger surfaces, it's about an inch square brush smaller square brush and a small pointed brush which is a round brush we will be painting on an 11 by 14 canvas you can purchase these um, at Michaels I would suggest getting a value pack um, I think you get six in each pack it's the uh, artist loft brand Michaels has affordable and um, quality supplies. I love the Dollar Tree. I love the Dollar Tree, but I do not suggest using any art supplies um, for a quality painting because the paint is very thin, has a lot of fillers in it, and does not adhere properly to your canvas. Um, you want to get a decent run-of-the-mill, you know, like medium, a student art brush. Uh, like I said, Artist Loft, they have quality, affordable brushes. Uh, you, Michaels delivers. Um, if you feel that you're going to take a few classes, that's you can contact me and I can even send you a supply pack. So without further ado, let's get started. I don't know where that accent came from, but bear with me. Okay. So this is our 11 by 14 canvas. And we are going to start. We have our mason jar with water. You never have to change your water when you're painting. Um, your paint is always thicker than your water. So no matter what, as long as you clean your brush properly, you don't need to clean your water. We're gonna start with the small square brush first. Give it a little wiggle in your water. Anytime you clean your brush, you just wanna give it a gentle wiggle. You don't wanna stab it. When you stab it, that paint can get trapped up in this metal piece and eventually it comes back down when you're using color. So you just want to press it to the bottom of your water bottle, give it a good swish back and forth so your water gets some bubbles. Anytime you take paint off of your palette, you always want to take it off from the edge, the edge of your dollop there, so you don't mix up the colors of your palette. So we're just going to do the outline of our pumpkin first. Don't worry if it's not perfect. We're gonna be painting over the outline anyway. Just a guideline to show you where the paint's gonna go. So I'm gonna take my brush, my small square brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of white. See how I take it off from the edge? And I'm gonna fill my brush front and back with white paint. Then I'm gonna take just a little bit of this golden brown color. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on the top of my brush. So you have white on the front and back, 
and just the golden brown, which is the raw sienna, on the top of your brush. So I'm going to do the outline of my pumpkin, and you want to make sure that you leave at least two inches from the top here. I think that's more, maybe, like make a small C with your hand, just to give you a little guideline. Make a small C. I'm just going to make a little dot there so I can, if you can see that small dot that I made there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on the bottom, make a small C with my hand fingers. And I'm going to make a dot there. I want to make sure that you can see this. So you have more space up here than down here, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm just your guide. You are the artist. And everything, every painting comes out different. So just trust the process. Don't judge your painting till it's done. We got this. So I'm going to hold my brush horizontally, which is side to side. So side to side, I'm going to start at my little dot here. And I'm just making like a C there. And then come over here. And I'm not, I'm not making it perfect. So this side is a little bit higher. And that's, let me see if I turn this light off. Is it easier to see? I think a little bit. So you have the shape of your pumpkin and you can see it and try to make it perfect it's not a perfect circle kind of indents up here I'm gonna bring it out and that's the shape of your pumpkin So I'm going to take my small square brush and I'm going to pop that right in the water. You want to, always want to make sure that you place the paintbrushes that you are not using into the water because the bristles can get hard rather quickly. So if you can see the detail of the background of this painting, it looks like wood. So we're going to, I'm going to teach you a little technique to create faux wood. So I have my large brush now. I'm gonna give that a little wiggle in the water. Take a sip of my wine. And I'm gonna take the darker brown paint, always off from the edge. And I'm gonna put and cover all the bristles not a very thick layer of paint, but you want to make sure that all the bristles are covered front and back with that dark brown. Holding my brush horizontally again. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to section off A little piece. So I'm going to angle my brush upward and I'm not going to drag it again. My brush is horizontal so I'm just pushing so my bristles are pointing upward and I'm just dragging it across the front and back. You can do your sides if you'd like. So I'm just I don't want it to be real even because I want there to be like a distressed look. So I'm just pushing that paint over. You see how it's distributing heavier in some parts. And that's what's going to give us the look of wood. So I'm pushing. So my bristles are pointed upward. There's a little bit of an angle. 
you can see there that's what my brush looks like from the side and I'm just dragging and pushing it you can refill your brush the front and back put more paint on there and I'm going to do the same thing starting from this side push my angle the brush is up I'm going to paint the top here and I'm just dragging my brush is up just kind of dragging I'm not doing solid strokes I gently go around my pumpkin there I'm just gently wiggling my brush it's okay if you get some of the paint inside your pumpkin just want to make sure that you don't have see how you can see a little bit of my canvas here just want to make sure that you can't see any of that canvas behind you just want to keep wiggling your brush to fill in that space. That's our first section. Now we're going to move on to our set, our middle section here. I'm going to fill my brush up with the darker brown paint and then just the very top of my paintbrush, just the top, always go from the edge. I'm going to put some black paint across the top of my brush. So if you can see, there's brown on the front and back, and I just put some black on the very top. Now the harder you press on your brush, the wider your lines will be. So you don't want to push down too hard when you're doing a, um, any kind of line. So just slightly, I'm just going to go right under our brown paint there. And I'm going to put a black line going right under here, put a black line, and just look at your, your painting. Make sure that these lines somewhat line up. Again, they don't have to be perfect. Trust me, they don't have to be perfect. Um, so you just want to make sure that your, your lines somewhat line up there. And then I'm going to section out my middle here. Again, these don't have to be straight. It's wood. It's pallet board. So here's my brush. I'm going to angle it up again. And that brown should be coming out of your brush. Remember, we're going to angle our brush so our bristles are pointed upwards. See, so hit the angle of my brush. Bring that in. It's okay if you hit your pumpkin. We get a little bit of that brown inside your pumpkin, it's fine. So I'm pressing, dragging, pressing, dragging. You don't want to get too much paint in there, but it's okay if you get some. I'm going to teach you something, a trick of the trade. Fill up the front and back as needed to do the other side. And this centerpiece here is a little lighter. I mean, sorry. Well, a little darker. <laughs> so we're filling that in. Again, you can wiggle. I'm not pressing too hard on my brush. I'm just putting a little pressure behind it to wiggle it. And you should have, if you're dragging, you press a little harder and kind of drag through. You'll see that it's giving your painting some texture. 
looks like wood grain. It's not supposed to look perfect, okay? Never judge a painting until it's done. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add that dark brown again to the front and back of my brush, just like before. But this time, so I have the dark brown. This time I'm just gonna add a little bit of that lighter brown color to the top. Last time we used the black this time we're gonna use a lighter color. So you have the dark brown on the front and back of your brush, and then the lighter golden brown just go across the top. And I'm gonna fill in the bottom. So it should be a little different color You can even, if you, mine's a little light up here, so I'm just kind of wiggling in my paint to cover. Again, your, your brush bristles are angled upward. Being a little, you know, not sloppy, but just not doing your, your brush strokes like this, but just kind of pressing and dragging across the canvas. That's what gives your painting the, the texture. I just keep filling my brush up. If you run out of paint, just add a little paint to your brush or your palette. Or you can just dip the very top of your brush and water, just a tiny, tiny bit, and that'll help pull your paint over as well. You don't, if you're getting brush strokes, just drag across them to even them out a bit. You can flip your canvas over now if it's on your, your easel or the table. You can just do your underside. I'm just going in to make sure that my sides are covered. That's our background so far. So if you got some of your paint inside of your pumpkin, I'm gonna show you a little trick right now that I learned from making funny mistakes. I'm gonna take my brush, remember, you're gonna push it to the bottom of your water well and vigorously swish it back and forth. So you get bubbles, like bubbles on top here. Now you can take your napkin and if you dab your brush on the side, you see how there's some solid color there? That means I didn't wash my brush properly or long enough. So I'm just gonna put it back in, give it a few more swishes. Now it's just tinted water, and that's how you know that your brush is clean properly. So you don't wanna see any solid color paint that's solid, and this is, this is okay.
So just water. So there's only water on my brush. I'm gonna make sure I angle it up. And you're gonna treat your brush kind of like a an eraser. So it's you know your your angled. So your brush, your bristles are to the side. Make sure there's not too much water on there. Because you don't want to get a drip. So I'm pressing. I got it wet. And you could take your napkin. And this will take any of the, the hard, any hard lines off. It'll be easier to paint over. So I'm just going over. It's not too much water because you don't want to get a water drip. I'm just wiggling my brush like an eraser over the pumpkin. And I'm pushing on my napkin, just kind of tracing over the shape of my pumpkin. It's still on there, but it's it's lighter and it'll be easier to cover. So my brush, I didn't, I just still kept my brush. And I'm putting a little bit of that golden brown back on, on just the top there. Just the top of my brush. And I'm gonna push a little different color, just shimmying it back and forth, just in certain spots. See, it's very light. You can really only see it here. It's just a very little until it ran out. I didn't clean my brush. I just added some black paint to the top now. So it's just black paint. I didn't cover my whole brush, just the top. And I'm just gonna highlight my sections with the black paint. out your brush, dab it on your napkin, and we're going to fill the brush with white paint. So I have my white paint on the front and back of my large brush. I'm going to, again, my brush, my bristles are pointed upwards and my brush is angled up and it allows me, if you push, you're gonna go over your original outline, just drag it down. So you're putting a little bit of pressure behind your brush. And you went over, you overlapped your original outline. So you're coming over here. Could we fill your brush? And I'm doing the other side. Don't worry if you're not covering it completely, it's completely fine. You can put another layer on it. okay if you get some brown in there as well because you don't want your pumpkin to be stark white so I'm just filling in my pumpkin I just keep refilling my brush with the white and I'm going to fill that in put a little pressure behind your brush 
so it distributes the paint evenly. My canvas is squeaking. So, did you hear that? I don't know if you could hear that. It's like, okay. Sorry. Oh, enough of that. Okay, so I still have the white on my brush. I'm not cleaning the brush off. I'm going to add a little bit of. The golden brown just to the corner of my brush see how I just I didn't add it across the entire top but it's just on the one side there of the golden brown there and then a little bit of the rust so you have the white that's already been on your brush the front and back and then just in the one corner you're putting a little bit of the golden brown and that rust color see ooh So the corner of the brush that has the colored paint on it, you're gonna, it's gonna point outward toward the edge of your pumpkin. So I'm pressing, my brush is horizontal, so it's just flat, it's gonna lay it flat, the whole brush, not just the corner, the whole brush. See how I'm, the whole brush. And I'm pushing and just keep going back and forth over the same spot just to blend in those colors to the pumpkin. Now you can, now I'm putting a nice amount of pressure on the, against the brush and I'm just going up and down, see? I'm filling up with a little bit of white now. I put white on the front and back again. Didn't clean my brush and then in that corner I'm doing the golden brown and the rust color again, okay? So the corner of the color is out toward the edge of your pumpkin. I'm still working on this side. The whole brush is is on the canvas, the whole brush, not just the corner, the whole brush. The white side of my brush is against the white side of my pumpkin, and the colored side of the brush is towards the edge. I'm using the one side of the brush, and then I flip it to the other side when I go up, and then I flip it to the other side when I go back. And that gives it a little bit, I'm trying to make sure that you can see So there's very light color. If you still see some of that outline behind your pumpkin there, I don't know if you can see, very faintly you can see the brown that I had moved into my pumpkin. Don't worry about that because we're gonna put leaves on our pumpkin and anything that we don't like that's on your center pumpkin, <laughs> we can cover up <laughs> with a leaf or a vine, a berry, something. So don't don't focus too much on something that you're not in love with on your painting. So now I'm going to use. I still have the white on my on my brush. I'm not cleaning it yet. Now instead of using the rust color and the light brown, I'm going to use. I still have the white on my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of that rust color on the corner again, and the dark brown. So instead of using that color, the light brown, I'm just using the rust and the dark in the one corner. So I have the white, and just in the corner, I have those two colors. So remember, color corner out, 
So the color, the corner that has the color on it is gonna go towards the edge of your pumpkin. And we're gonna do the same thing. The white part of your brush is gonna be pressed against your canvas on the white side. And the color part will be going around the outline. If you run out like I did, see how it's a little not blended very well here? You can just add some more white to your to your brush and that'll help you push through. You just want a little bit of color. So it doesn't have to be as bold as mine. You just don't want your pumpkin to be stark white. You just want to have a little bit of color in there. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with my light. Tiny, tiny bit of water to the top of my brush just a little bit and I'm gently not pressing too hard I'm just gently blending that color in so there really is just a small hint of color throughout your pumpkin noise in the background <laughs> someone's driving by the studio I don't know who or what they are doing but right here so I'm going to place the large brush back into the water give it a good wiggle 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 in there Cheers again. I'll give you a minute to catch up. I'm gonna press pause and be right back. You can do the same if you need to. Obviously, you can always pause <laughs> because you could replay it. Okay, our next step is we're gonna go back to our small square brush We're going to take the lighter brown paint on the front and back of your paintbrush. We're going to hold it horizontally and we're going to make the vines on the bottom here. So I'm going to start with almost just a little bit inside the pumpkin here. Very soft to touch. And as we get to the edge here, we're going to lift our brush. Just kind of fan it out. So you're going to lift it, press, and then lift as you come to the edge so you get that finer line there. I'll come back to the center and to the same thing on this side. You don't want to have it uh, too symmetrical because they are vines. If you feel like your paint, you can't quite see it, you can always add a little bit of white to your brush to make them stand out a bit. So 
So you kind of give it a little swoop at the end there. And then I'm going to make the branches that come off there. I'm going to do one on this side. One over here. I'm not making them the same length. See, this one's a little shorter, this longer. Less is more with these. You don't want to add too many branches that come off. So I have that. Give your brush a nice wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. So it's very overwhelming to be sitting in front of a canvas and painting it <clears throat> two inches from your face and not judging it. I have the same problem, but the truth is that you really do need to just trust the process because it will drive you insane. So once everything's done, your painting really starts to come together. I have told um, people in my classes to always, like you can take a picture of your painting with your cell phone and look at it and 90% of the people have always say oh it looks so much better on my phone and it's not a camera trick it's just because you can see the painting in its entirety like when you go to a museum they tell you to step back from the paintings and it's not just because they don't want you to touch it it's because they want you to see the piece in its entirety so when you're sitting like this you can't see the whole thing you're just kind of focusing on where the paint is wet and and or a certain area that you feel that you've had a little hard time with. So just trust yourself that in the end, it'll all come together. And I always tell people also too, you can hit pause, walk around, you know, come back and you'll see it with a different perspective. So with that said, I washed out my brush, give a little dab on my napkin. Now I'm putting the black on the front and back of my brush, just the black. And I'm gonna do the darker vine on top. So same thing, you would just wanna, I'm holding it horizontally and I'm gonna cross over the vine so it looks like it's almost laying over it. So I'm gonna start above it. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna dip down. As long as it crosses over the vine somewhere, it doesn't have to be exactly where mine did, it'll be fine. Same thing, just adding, pulling off a few stems here at the end. Just added one in the center there. Now when we do the stem of the pumpkin, which is right here, you want to make sure that um, you make your end piece more narrow and you don't want to round this off because there's a chance that it may look like something that's not a step if you catch my drift so <laughs> i'm going to start here at the top of my pumpkin with my brush with black front and back i hold it vertical but then the brush angle is going to change as I make that stem. So here's the center of the pumpkin. I'm going to pull it off to the side a little bit. You don't want to make it too wide. So I'm kind of bringing it like the length of my fingertip from the center. And I'm going to come up 
this out slightly. I'm going to round it up on top. Come out. Now on the inside, I'm going to angle my brush in like this. I'm just going to angle it in. I'm coming out about, about an inch, so it's a little bit further on this side. This side was like smaller, so it's going to be a little wider here and a little bit more of an angle. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to pull it in. Don't worry if you mess up because it's black paint. You can always paint over it. So I'm curving it inward, following the curve. And remember, we're going to keep this end more narrow. And it's just squared off. And I'm going to fill that stem in with the black paint. So I didn't clean my brush, I just put a little tiny bit of that golden brown right on top of the black there. I'm going to hold my brush vertically, so, and I'm not going to put too much pressure. I'm going to be real light and soft to touch. I'm just, just very softly kind of dragging, not in any particular order. So I'm barely touching the canvas, and I'm just going to add just a tiny bit. Of highlight to my stem. I'm not pressing too hard, not adding too much color. It's going to automatically kind of bl blend into your your black, but you want to be very soft to touch so it just deposits itself lightly throughout your stem. Just bring it up real soft, real quick. You can just drop that <clears throat> brush right into your water here. And I know your water is probably getting murky, but like I said, as long as you swish your brush properly, you never look at, I'm not even using a lot of water. You never have to change your water. So now we're going to make the shapes of our leaves and our vines. We're going to add our final details to the painting. I wish I could see everybody's. I wish I could see them. You can always message me to see how they came out. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. I will always do my best to answer everybody. And um, I'm self-taught, so I've made many mistakes and learned how to uh, fix them. So I can always help you with that as well. So we're going to move on to our little pointed brush here. Give it a little wiggle. You can hold it on the side. If you hold your brush on the angle, kind of you know, roll it like that. You'll get your point back. So I'm going to just cover my round brush in that light brown paint. I'm going to add a little color to it so you can see it a little bit better. Now you can practice the shapes of your leaves um, if you'd like on the scrap paper that you have just to see the, the, um, the shape of your leaf. So 
So we're going to keep them, keep it simple, or try to. <laughs> so I'm going to put my first leaf here. So I'm starting at my, just, there's my stem. So I'm going to pull it up just a little. Like this. And give it a little loop. And you want to make sure that when you're making your leaves that you leave a little space in between each different shape. So it'll make sure you keep the detail of your leaf. So I did an angled loop. And then I did a regular loop. I'm just, I have different color in here just so you can see it a little bit easier. You can use any base color, oops, that you'd like. So then here's my, so you have your angled loop, your little loop. I do another loop. And then when I bring it in on the other side over here, I don't want it to look too symmetrical. So I'm going to bring this one a little straighter. So we have angle loop, 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 and it's kind of give it a little wiggle. Almost looks like a shape of a ghost there, right? Probably hear me breathing so I'm so close to the speaker. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. so sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is <laughs> this is this leaf, and then I'm just going to do a little a little tiny. Looks like a little triangle there, and I'm going to pull it up. So there's like a million different shapes of leaves. So you don't, no matter what yours, even if it looks like the shape of a shoe, don't even worry about it because it honestly, it's still gonna look like a leaf no matter what shape that you use. So now I'm gonna take, you can, um, I'm gonna go back to my little square brush. It has black on it. So make sure that you really wiggle your little square brush out. So I'm gonna take just yellow. So I have my outline, whatever color we use, and I'm gonna take some yellow, and I'm gonna go right over, anytime we cover an outline, you just wanna go right over the outline. It'll pull some of your color in. So you always wanna cover the original outline. So I have straight yellow, and this is just gonna be, gonna be, this is going to be the base. I won't sing. That'll be awful. So. <laughs> so you're just going to fill in your leaf. If this is just the base color. I said I wasn't going to sing. Sorry. Um, there we go. You can see through it. It's fine because we're going to add other colors to it. I'm just going to put some red in there. Just going around the outline there. Just add some yellow. And I'm going to let this leaf dry a bit. Before we add any more color to it. Because you can't add wet paint on top of wet paint. It'll just blend, so the colors won't won't really come out, and you'll end up actually starting to take off color. So we're just gonna let that first layer dry. We're gonna do the second shape now on our leaves. I'm just mixing a little bit of yellow and that rust color together. Let's see. So we have that rust color, a little bit of yellow. Let's see. I added a little bit of red. It's just a different shade. 
a brown there. So I'm going to connect it. Just made it. Almost it looks very similar in color right there. So I'm going to add a little um, white to my brush and see how that comes out. As my base, so I'm gonna go make sure I go around that leaf. I'm filling this in with a little round brush now. My third leaf, just bringing out, I just add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white, making a loop, loop. Curved lines and little loops really are your trick with leaves or points, keeping them not too symmetrical. to keep this side more yellow on this leaf. where you can get creative with your colors. Being soft to touch helps blend them in. going around the shape. Seeing different reds, yellow, orange, just giving your, your leaves some color. Bring a little yellow. I'm not really washing my brush because we're using the same colors here. Just keeping it the same color scheme. Well, the leaves in fall can get so pretty with all the different colors.
I'm going to let them dry a bit. Sorry. <laughs> So vines can be a little difficult to make anything with real thin lines if you are just starting out as a painter. You might want to practice on scrap paper. Just the amount of pressure that you put behind your brush, like I said in the beginning, the harder you press behind your brush, the wider your line will be. So you just want to be very gentle, lightly touch, and just drag your brush. You're going to make a loop. So practice on a piece of scrap paper. I just had black on my pointed brush. I'm going to start on this end. I'm going to come up, make a little wide circle. A smaller loop. It's like a spiral or a spring. You can go back in if you're, you can see some of your canvas behind a loop. You can fill that in. This is always the scary part because <laughs> you have to go over the white. So you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. If you want to, you know, opt out of this part, you can. But so here I'm going to start back up at my stem a little loop I'm bringing it down I'm not pressing too hard you can make a squiggle see I just kind of brought it down makes it a little easier now you see how my paint my brush runs out of paint that's fine you can just go back in there real soft fill it back in Now I'm just going to add small springs on the side of my vines. Again, you can practice on your scrap paper. Very gentle. Just a few little springs there. To check and see if your leaves are dry, you can always use the back of your pinky and just kind of tap. And if the paint sticks to your pinky, give it a few more seconds or minute. Acrylic paint usually dries pretty quick, but I don't know exactly what brand you're using. Some brands take longer than others. So I'm going to use the small pointed brush. I cleaned it out and I'm just loading the brush up with the red paint. So I just covered the brush. You can go heavy on the on the paint for this part. This is for your berries. So I don't attach the berries to the vine. 
I'm gonna add some red sporadically. You can make them different sizes. Some can be big large berries, some can be small. We're gonna add white berries in there as well. So here's your red pop, <laughs> red paintbrush. I'm gonna a circle. You can put it right to the canvas, give it a wiggle, kind of swish it around circular motion to get that berry, making a smaller one. And I'm just making it sporadic because we're going to add some of the white berries as well. And look, I'm not attaching it directly to the branches. Less is more too, so you don't want to add too many because you don't want your berries to be your main focal point. Make sure you do both the dark and the lighter vine. Keeping your paint filled at the point of your brush on top helps you to keep the, the berries more circular. You can add, you know, I'm kind of putting them at different lengths or heights or sizes there. forget the bottom. Each side again they don't even have to be perfectly circular. I have the red on my brush so if you want to um, add some more red to your leaves. If your leaves are dry, you can add your extra colors in there just to highlight them a bit. load up your brush it makes it a lot easier to do the, the berries and I'm gonna add my white berries now Careful not to go over your red berries because I don't have pink ones. I guess you, if you want pink berries, you can do whatever you'd like. If you'd like to add just a little hints of accents to your vines here, I'm just adding a little white. Not all the way through, just in certain areas. It's very subtle. You can add it to the stem if you'd like. A little soft to touch so you're not pressing too hard. You're just very gently pulling that white real softly. And add a little bit of yellow accents real soft to my leaves if you want to you can you don't have to and the best part we did it we made it <laughs> so the best part is adding your name 
any color you'd like. I, I say go bold because you should be proud of yourself. I'm just using white. Nah, I don't know if I want to use white. I'll add a little color to it. So you can put your signature wherever your little heart desires. I'm just going in this corner. You can do your initials. I'm doing my last name. And there we have it. Our lovely fall painting. I would really love to see what everybody did. Um, you can message me and I'd love to see it. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you had a great time. Uh, remember, like and subscribe so you can get notified the next time uh, we do a class. And if you have, uh, if you want to paint something, if you have any suggestions, let me know and we can paint whatever you'd like. So I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks again.